Welcome everybody um, to our first official Culture Club for 2021. For those of you who participated before, you'll know that I'm Glenda Cruz, a congregant of Ten Temple Israel. For those of you that haven't uh, participated before, you're very welcome. Um, what we've done with this space is we're trying to create a space for creative people in our congregation, in our friend circles, in our acquaintance circles, to come in and share about their creative process, whether it's a novel, a book, um, we've had musicians, we've had filmmakers, we've had, we, we're hoping to have artists coming up. And this is the space to share how people uh, roll out their creative pro their process and how they come to do what they do. Um, and it's a space to share ideas and discuss. Um, so um, we're very happy to start this year. Um, we're having a very different strategic focus to what we've had before. Here, I think it's fair to say we are going to be focusing on strategic thinking for our times. Whether you're in a business, an organization, I think we can think how some of these ideas will apply to our shul or our community. And I think it can also apply to some of our own personal lives and the challenges we're currently facing. And we have a very special speaker. I'm very pleased to welcome Grant Seif. Many of you might know him. He is a congregant. I know some of the participants have said they've known him since he was born. Um, but Grant is, as you saw on the blurb, a strategist, a management educator, and a leadership advisor. And um, he's an eminent academic, I think it's fair to say. He teaches at a number of business schools in South Africa and in Europe. And if you look at his CV, he's very well qualified. But what I like about Grant is he's a great polymath and he is also an author of a novel that he published a few years ago called Enrichment. And if you haven't read it, I encourage you to because it's a very racy corporate thriller and it's a real recommended read. Um, but what I really liked and what stood out from what Grant told us about himself was this phrase that he serves as a thinking partner. And I think that the times we in now more than ever call for somebody who helps us to be a thinking partner. So tonight we've invited Grant to speak about his new book, um, which is a more serious book, but it's also a more pragmatic book. And it's called Passion, Power and Purpose, Engaging with Strategy in Your Organization and Your Life. So um, we thought that this would really be, provide some interesting food for thought and tools for all of us as we're facing the challenges that we do in this particular time. And Grant's going to talk a lot about resilience and change and strategy and so on. But what I've done is I've asked Grant to speak, um, to, to reflect for us why he wrote this book, um, to also share with us what were some of the sources of inspiration that he drew on to write the book. And then to share with us some of the key messages of the book for different kinds of readers. Um, and once Grant's start, done his short introduction, we're going to open for your comments and questions. And I know we've got the right people in the Zoom that it's going to be very lively. So I'm going to hand over to you, Grant. You're very welcome and thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you very much, Glenda. Um, quite intimidating to be uh, on here talking about my, my book. It's more interesting to talk about someone else's book, but I'm, I'm happy to be doing so. Um, it, it was a, it, quite a journey, actually, this book. It's the culmination of 20 plus years of what I do in the world uh, as a strategist, as a management consultant, and as an educator primarily in business schools. And um, the, the reason I suppose I, I wrote the book was that I wanted to try and capture the, the various uh, 
techniques and lessons and insights that I've gained in this teaching journey uh, in one place uh, to be able to provide what I think is a, a comprehensive and applied pragmatic way of thinking about strategy in your context. And your context could be an organization. It could be yourself out there in the world. And the, I suppose, you know, just to, just to underline this point about when to capture a comprehensive view of how to engage with strategy, my interest was less theoretical and more applied, less academic and more pracademic. And I think what I've tried to do is simplify complexity. But, but I wanted to go a bit further than that um, in two respects. Uh, I think the first respect is, is that my background isn't really only business, it's also uh, psychology. I studied an MA in psychology uh, and, and then I did an MBA and a PhD. But what that has meant for me is that strategy is not just about the thinking. In fact, strategy is mostly about behavior. And, and, uh, and for those of us that get caught up in business schools teaching on MBA programs, the danger has been that, you know, 100% almost of an MBA has been about the thinking. And we neglect to think about how people feel. But if we want to lead change and be relevant, behavior is critical. We need to understand how we're different and how to lead people on a journey that uh, is about change. Actually, that's what strategy is about. Strategy is about making change happen in a particular way. So the book is not just about thinking about strategy. It's also about strategy in relation to behavior. And I think the third inspirational compulsion for me about this book was my realization as I've taught strategy about applying strategy models, tools in organizations as they apply to organizations, drawing on the different theorists and strategists uh, in different respects around the world. What struck me was that almost every single model or tool can be applied to me as a person, to you. And so what I've done in writing this book, you, you notice that I've called it Passion, Power and Purpose. And the subtitle is Engaging with Strategy in your organization and your life. And, and I wanted to add on that and your life because at the end of each chapter in the book, I translate all of those organizational and strategy tools into a self-reflection process. How can you use these tools to empower yourself? In fact, the first part of the book, the, you know, the title is Passion, Power and Purpose. And it just struck me that this is what I hope for with this book that it inspires passion, it empowers, and it creates a sense of purpose that can be realized. And, and I, I think that the, the, the three elements, passion, this is what I have in myself to be something in the world, to do something of value, power, the question, how do I do this? And the book answers that question. How does the book then empower you with a framework of engaging to allow you to harness your passion, your energy, and realize your purpose? And if you, and it was interesting listening to uh, Helen talk about her course on purpose, it, just to appreciate the power of purpose. You know, there's a, there's a relationship between these three words, passion, power, and purpose. The purpose is a reason for being. It's an organization's reason for being. How do we make a difference in the world? How do we make it a better place? And you know, that's a social contract. When we talk about um, being in the world of work and business, it needs to be about shared value. No organization is going to thrive if it does so at the expense of society. An organization needs to have a purpose that it uplifts the world around it in some other way. That's what purpose is about. So now ask yourself at a personal level, what is your purpose? What is your reason for being? How do you make a difference? And purpose, of course, is attached to our values, uh, which govern the decisions we make, the choices we make. So I'd like to suggest that the book helps you harness your passion, your energy, 
focus it through the strategic tools so that you can amplify your energy towards a vision, a purpose. If you like, a purpose is a reason for being, and a vision is a picture of your desired future that you aspire to. I have a colleague who studied uh, his PhD, and later on in life, he was, he was in his 40s, and uh, his name is Billy Coop. And Billy uh, had a family, young family, had a job. And so you can imagine when he had to do his research for his PhD. And if you can't, well, the answer's late at night when he was tired. You know, and he, at many times he said to me, he thought about giving up. And until he realized he needed to have a vision, you know, he kind of understood that there was a purpose here, but he needed to have a vision, a picture that crystallized why he was doing what he was doing that could help him fuel that energy he needed to get to the end goal. So he said, my personal vision is a picture of my future that I feel passionate about, that inspires passion. And if you think about poor old Billy Coop, by the way, he eventually did get his PhD and he's now a professor at a leading business school in Europe. What do you imagine that picture might have been, that vision he used to fuel his focus, his passion, his energy? And you might say, well, it would have been a beautiful home uh, or a lovely island where you could could have holidays, but it wasn't any of that. It was a very simple, clear picture of graduation where he was up on the podium in a red gown being capped and his family was there in the audience applauding his achievement. And that was enough. It kept him going late into the night and he, and he, and he achieved his, he realized his vision. He was purposeful. So I quite like this idea that my book, is about your passion. It empowers you with strategy, tools, and frameworks to allow you to realize your purpose. Maybe I should go on a little bit. Uh, how am I doing, uh, uh, Glenn? Did you want me to stop or should I keep going? You're on mute, Glenda. Sorry, I've got a new laptop and I'm struggling to learn to drive it. It's so sure. sensitive that when I unmuted quickly mutes again can you hear me now <laughs> i can hear you how am i doing should i keep going or should i shut I think up and you could you... keep going and then we'll open up because i'm fascinated right. i think we can keep going so glenda's got a, a copy of the book and has had a chance to look at it the book is is full of models and tools but it is organized in a pragmatic pragmatic type of framework to allow you to engage with strategy. And, and I use a, you know, I talk about the various theoretical uh, frameworks that are available to us um, to think strategically and to execute strategy. But I, I use uh, quite a simple applied framework for engaging with strategy that I call TAFOA G. It stands for Today, Future, Options, Actions. To FOA, today, future options actions fueled by gaps, G for gaps. And an interesting thing is when we think about ourselves strategically, it's the gaps that we need to look out for, the gaps. And in a changing world, there are always gaps. You know, the gaps between what's changed out there in the world that we live in and uh, that may have changed within our organizational space or our operating space in our business. And we look for those gaps because those gaps are opportunities or they're threats. You know, if we don't pay attention to the changes going on around us, we may not be as relevant. So we look for those gaps. But there are a second set of gaps that emerge in our today, future options, actions conversation. And the second set of gaps are about what I was talking about earlier, about Billy Coop and his vision. Where am I going to? What is my vision? Longer term and shorter term. And we ask that question at a personal level, and we need to ask the question at the organizational level. And when we do, we discover that there's a different set of gaps. It's a set of gaps that we create ourselves about where we are now and where we're trying to get to. And these gap areas, these opportunities or threats help us focus. And the question is, which of these opportunities and threats should we turn into strategies to help us focus our energy 
empower us to move forward towards our purpose, towards our vision of the future. And of course, the last part of that TAFOA G, Today Future Options Actions, is about taking action. And what I've learned over many years uh, engaged in this field of strategy is that to take action is all about behavior. It's about persuading others to come with us on a change journey that allows us to move from what we have to what we need, to move forward, if you like. So the book then is organized around this Tafoa G, very practical framework, today, future options actions. And I think about today in two perspectives, actually three perspectives. Today, out there, the changing world. We need to understand that changing world using strategy models and tools to stay relevant. If we don't pay attention to the change out there, the danger is we become irrelevant. You know, sometimes we see businesses who, which are very efficient. They focus on control and efficiency. And the danger of doing that alone is that if all we do is focus on efficiency, we may become irrelevant if there are new ways of doing things. So we pay attention to the changes out there. We need to learn that, of course, at all levels, at an organizational level and at a personal level, to be a rule taker. What a rule taker means is you don't only have to be innovative, you've also got to understand what customers want, what technology changes have taken place, how the geopolitics have changed. We need to be good rule takers in order to stay relevant. I talk about multiple perspectives. And so there are four perspectives that come out of our Tafoji framework. And one of them is outside in. You've got to have an open mind to change, to stay relevant, outside in for relevance. But when we look at our situation, we also need to look inside out. And in the book, I explore what this means. Inside out, what are our competencies? What are our resources that we can use? To be, to be uh, able to make a difference in the world, to leverage, to be able to win. So when we think about uh, looking inside out, uh, the interesting thing is that's also about who we are. Uh, what do we have? Do we understand how we organize ourselves effectively? And that also has to do with our personal uh, abilities, our competence, our personal competence, as well as the competencies that make up the business, how the business works. And the third element of this today uh, uh, conversation is about how well aligned we are. Are we optimally aligned? And the truth is no organization, in fact, you could say no individual is perfectly aligned for very long. In a changing world, something changes and you're out of alignment. So we strive to optimize alignment. So the second part of this Tafoji conversation is about the future. How do we look at the future long-term? We look at the future long-term to have a destination, a goal, to set direction, but also shorter term so that we focus on priorities. And lastly, we consider, well, second lastly, we look at our options that come out of this conversation of outside in for relevance, inside out for leverage, and then future long-term and short-term, we look at our options in order to prioritize what will be the best focus for us that helps guide us, that fuels our passion, that aligns with our purpose. And lastly, then it's about taking action. But I think I've got caught up into some of the details now of the book. The truth of it is the book uses this framework, Today, Future Options Actions, and there's a chapter on each of the component parts of this framework. So the third chapter is about the changing world. The fourth chapter is about looking within the organization. The fifth chapter is about how you optimize strategic alignment. And then we go into future positioning and chapter seven options. And chapter eight is all about execution, how we take action and we make the difference we need. And lastly, the last chapter of the book explores the topic of strategic leadership, because ultimately strategy is all about leadership. I think, Linda, that must be enough for our intro. What do you say? I say I agree. 
I will take your leadership, strategic leadership from you and open up to the floor. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Grant. I think Please you've really explained on. very well what drove you and why you're doing it. And I think for all of us, we are looking for guidance based on 20 years of a working life that is, I like that word, pracademic and practical and pragmatic, um, and that it gives us tools we can apply. So I'm going to throw it open because I know we've got people in who, who would be using these kinds of ideas in lots of different settings. So you're welcome to ask a question that relates to your settings and let's see if Grant can help you to, to point you to some of the key concepts that could be useful. Or if you want elaboration on any of the um, ideas that he's put out of this Topoga framework, Tafoga, sorry. I like that, I didn't think of it like that, absolutely. Please do feel free to ask anything and I'd be very happy to try and answer. I think just it's best um, just to unmute yourself and ask your question because I can't see everybody on my screen. So if you've got a question, unmute yeah. and go for it. Yeah. Helen, go Helen. Yeah, actually, um, I really, really need to get that book. It sounds very interesting. And more importantly, I need to get that book for my children who are very into all this. Um, my, my question is basically uh, because I'm, I've so spent the last month in purpose. And I'd like to know um, what Grant says in terms of, I realize now it was a big, big paradigm shift that um, your purpose is moving all the time. I mean, I had one purpose, came back to South Africa to work in the underprivileged area, save the world. And my purpose was obviously far up, high in the sky up there. So even though I'm working in the townships, it's actually, it seems to me that purpose is evolving. I, I would love Grant's opinion on that. It's evolving. It depends on the situation and where you are. Uh, for me, I feel personally that I've come, brought my purpose down to more reality. And I would love to know, is purpose evolving all the time? What's Grant's opinion on that? I, I don't see why not, uh, Helen. I think it, it helps when our purpose is stable over time. Uh, so, you know, we often, uh, we, we, we adjust our vision uh, and we adjust our priorities but usually our purpose is fairly stable over time because it's underpinned by our values. Uh, however, there's no reason why your purpose shouldn't change at different stages of life. Of course, it, it, it ultimately will. Any other questions, guys? Mm. <clears throat> And um, Grant, I, I wonder if you could say a bit more of a big issue in our, well, on that purpose question, I'll wait yeah. with mine. There's a question from Viv Amsty, um, and we might ask her to elaborate. Can I have passion and power and dither on purpose? Well, I, the concern I've got about having passion and power and dithering on purpose is Grant, that, can I interrupt? Yeah, it's me, not Viv, okay, just for point of clarity. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Vivian sorry, never, Gary, hello. Vivian, Vivian doesn't do that on purpose, as you know, only too well. You know, only too well. Thanks, Gary. Uh, and Gary I was surprised. <laughs> the problem with dithering on purpose is that uh, we, we, we don't necessarily achieve the objectives we hope for, because we don't know what they are. Am I supposed to respond or can I have time to absorb the answer, please? <laughs> yeah. Grant. Um, Grant, I've got something to say. Um, Go ahead, Sue. Am I, am I muted or am I, I'm not muted? No, no, I can um, hear you. I'm, uh, firstly, I, f I think it's fascinating. I, I love your idea of this framework and the mapping of the inside out, outside in, and passion and power. I, I was struck by the many Ps. The, 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 the word play of uh, passion, power, 
um, purpose. And then I thought of the idea that the changing world, we need to pivot. So you have your, you have your set map or you have your framework, but you need to pivot, especially now with the pandemic. So I was just playing with those peas. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on your chapter of the changing world and how you adapted your framework or your map or whether it, or, or, or what happened there. I, I really like that idea. You know, I think that some aspects of uh, our way of being in the world need to be stable and focused, but others uh, more agile and flexible. And so, yes, you know, I, I, so, and maybe Helen, this helps answer your earlier uh, uh, question or your perspective, because I think that, um, you know, your underlying values uh, and your ultimate objective to manifest yourself in your life is probably stable over time. It, it may change depending on priorities, but the challenge is to be relevant, is to be agile, to be able to be agile and and shift or pivot, if you like. So, in fact, the whole book, you know, and is is about an ongoing strategic conversation that you have with others in your organization or you have with yourself. And so, my Tefoa G framework is designed to have that conversation as an ongoing conversation. You know, when I talk about alignment you, we want to be careful of perfect perfect is a dead end perfect is a full stop and often perfect becomes imperfect and so the challenge i think is not to use the idea of a static state i rather talk about optimize so i continually pay attention i stay awake to change out in the operating environment within the organizational environment i pay attention to those changes those changes create gaps and those gaps are opportunities for me or threats to me and my job is to pivot continually to continually optimize in order to to travel on this path towards my purpose so pivot is a good fourth p thank you very much you also added another p of perspective so thank you the personal and the perspective. Lots of so bees. Lots of bees. Hi, Grant. It's Debbie from Hi, Melbourne, Debbie. London. Um, so thank you all for inviting me. And I'm jealous you're all sitting there in short sleeves and tank tops and I'm here in my jersey, you know. Um, and it's snowing. Um, <laughs> That's jealous now, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd be interested, I mean, uh, you know, and this is, um, it, it's been a, a more academic discussion. I'd like to hear maybe, um, you know, a, a sort of um, example from your own work of, um, you know, something, I mean, partly that what led you to think you had needed to do this book, but, you know, and, and obviously, you know, we need everything to be anonymous, so you don't have to like name names or places or anything, but I think, um, you know, to see how how you uh, are applying this, you know, what are the actual um, mechanics as you sit mm -hmm. with a particular issue, problem, or something that you're doing in, in, in your work? Yeah, okay, I think that's good. So I consult as well as uh, teach, uh, you know, teaching, it's about a framework for understanding how to, how to think strategically and then execute strategy. And, and, and so too, in fact, in, in the consulting space, how do we have a conversation with a common language to agree on what is most important, what our priorities are? And how do we then translate those priority options or objectives into actions in order to make change happen? And now I suppose, you know, what you're asking for is an example of us actually doing that. And I have to be honest that most of my interventions are a part of that picture. So they either, te it's about teaching, or it's about development, or it's about execution. But it's not always uh, all of those in, in, in one go. Um, yeah, in, in fact, uh, I have to be honest, the... The story that's top of mind is, is really a story about myself uh, screwing up in trying to apply some of these principles when I was much younger. And, and in a way, uh, I suppose I learned some lessons about how not to execute strategy and make change happen. But you don't want to hear about my failure, Debbie, so I'd rather not tell you that, that story. Um, 
I'm sure you'll agree. Those are the best lessons. <laughs> All right, I, I tell you what, I, I mean, if, if you'd like to have a, a story at my expense, I'm prepared to, I don't know if I am actually, am I? Yeah, I can, Eric's saying yay. <laughs> Helen, yeah, asking to, Helen wants to ask a question. <laughs> Okay, but I was in fact almost persuaded. I know you're trying to save me, Sue. Um, Helen, go for it. What's your question? Just following up what you said. Um, yes. It's so incredibly valuable. And I wonder whether you, you do this kind of talk in high schools to senior uh, boys, because I wish I'd had all that uh, knowledge or that somebody had taught me that at high school. It's more important than reading, writing, arithmetic. I mean, it's so important. Do yeah. you give to the high school? I think you're quite right, Helen. I have actually done uh, a couple of talks uh, to Hertzlia, to the matrix and grade 11s. And I do think that some of these strategy tools can be, um, can be used in a, in a pragmatic way to help people think practically and constructively about themselves in the world. And, and as I, you know, so I, I use this topology framework today, future options, actions, that you could apply to yourself as a young person stepping out in the world. And I quite like this idea of having, as Sue says, an agile or pivoting type mindset so that you don't get too stuck in a corner and become irrelevant. You know, in fact, as Sue, I talk about four, four perspectives that are, you know, in a very practical way, it's outside in for relevance inside out, what I have for leverage, but I also need to have clarity. So we talk about, I set strategic direction, top down for direction. And lastly, I need to have an empathy, an EQ. And so we talk about bottom up for engagement. I need to engage others around me in order to make things happen. So we, you know, there are four perspectives when you engage with strategy and organization, outside in, inside out, top down and bottom up. Um, so we've yeah, got, so, um, so, so hang on. Uh, so uh, Tanya has got a, a, a question and then uh, Gary will come to you. So right. Tanya, you. just unmute thank yourself. You. Actually quite a few questions. First of all, thank you very much Grant. This is fascinating. Uh, is a book available in South Africa? Yes, it's, a, it's published by Van Skyk. Uh, there are a South African academic publisher. Yeah. You can get it from all good bookshops, uh, or you can uh, you can get it uh, as an ebook. Um, so if you go to Fun Skyke, uh, you will be able to order it as an ebook, or you can buy it from any bookshop. Thank you very they, much. They said to, I said any bookshop, and the publisher said, "No, you don't say any bookshop. You have to say any good bookshop, because the other ones don't provide it." Um, right. Uh, thank you very much. That's good to know. Um, is it a book that could be used? Um, profitably by entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I think, it, you see, I've, I've written the book so that I believe it can be used uh, as a, for an individual thinking about their lives. You don't have to even be a business person. I think you can use it to set yourself up to have an effective life. I was, that was what I, I was hoping for, that the book would offer a, something of uniqueness in the sense that you could engage with strategy, not only in your organization, but also in your personal life. And so each chapter has a set of reflective questions, self-reflective questions to apply to you as a person. Uh, and so the answer is definitely yes. Good, thank you very much. And then the third question, the third of four is, um, can one have a multiplicity of purposes or does that mean that you, you are not sufficiently focused? I think you can, uh, Tanya. I don't see why not. Good. That's uh, very encouraging. So, so, you know, if I think about uh, Safaricom in Kenya, <laughs> they, they talk about their purpose being um, threefold and in very different ways. So they talk about their purpose is to save the planet, women's empowerment, and to be humane. Now, I mean, those are... So uh, Safaricom is... Uh, they, they, uh, they own M-Pesa. They are bigger than the four biggest banks in East Africa. And so Safaricom so said that, I mean, now you think about those three aspects of purpose. To be humane, women's empowerment, and to save the planet. They don't seem related. And yet they are incredibly inspiring of the people working there. 
so long as they live their purpose, you know, and, and people want to work at Safaricom in Kenya. That is absolutely fascinating. And then finally, Grant, uh, for younger people, what do you think of the future, particularly in this very bizarre and rather surreal world we're living in at the moment? Uh, I was extremely distressed to hear of glaciers sliding off mountains in India and I think elsewhere. And uh, this is climate change, but perhaps not climate change. What is a, what is a kind of future that one can anticipate for young people today? That's a terrible question. Yeah, well, I, I, I like your question, uh, Tony, because I mean, to me, what I hope is that young people will find their voices and speak out. And I would hope, I, my, my book is dedicated to my children, you know, who are becoming adults in a new world. And, and I, I really do hope that, uh, that they find the pragmatic common sense tools to be able to look at options and not get stuck and to find their voices. I think of Greta Thunberg, you know, when you talk about young people. Okay. Okay, so we've got uh, Gary Gary up next. Oh, Viv is there now. Yes, Viv, how's it? Um, so thank you um, for hosting this, guys, and also to Grant. Um, just to say that um, under the auspices of the Elliot Osrin Leadership Institute, Grant has been doing quite a lot of work with us. And um, so I'm thinking about how this is applied um, into community work. There are people sitting around um, the Zoom room this evening who are involved in building community and as Sue refers to, um, you know, the, the pivoting of community at this particular point in time. And I think, Grant, when you talk about purpose, um, I'm also understanding that um, we, we recognize the passion and the purpose of the individual but when you're working in an organization, you're actually applying that passion and purpose into your organization. Um, that's the activation, the power, the energy that comes through. Um, but when we're talking about community organizations and community needing to be resilient and agile in change and strategy, can you um, reflect on that a bit and, and expand your thinking? because it's been a very useful um, uh, collaboration with you to bring that into us as, as professionals and lay leaders working in community. Yeah, uh, thanks, Viv. I mean, it has, and it's very exciting, uh, the work that the early Elliot uh, Osrin Leadership Institute does, and, and uh, an important work too. And, and you know this idea, you use the word energy, Viv, and I think that what strategy needs to be about is it needs to be a way of fueling energy. We, you know, we Hello? Sorry, okay. I thought someone wanted to speak. We energize others and ourselves when we apply some of the tools that are, for example, in this book, in the framework that I believe there are, 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 are positioned, in order to be able to focus on purpose. I think that's true in the public sector, in the community, in the nonprofit arena, as much as it is in the world of business. I really do. So, you know, I, I hope that you, you are comfortable with this idea that, that strategy, behavior, and understanding of behavior, leadership, uh, you know, are all intertwined. And if you want to empower yourself and fuel energy or build energy and ultimately lead others on a journey of empowering themselves, then, you know, a strategic conversation is critical. And so I, I like the idea that the tools in this book, the idea of a strategic conversation applies in all spheres. So Grant, I've got to follow up to that one if no one else needs ones to speak at this point. And that is, unfortunately, in the times we're living, we're having such degrees of polarization and anger and rage between those who don't share the same purpose. So have you got some insights into if you're in an organization and you're trying to build common purpose, but there are those 
who oppose perhaps or are not fully behind the common purpose or have a different purpose, which they might be pursuing with equal passion in an opposite direction. Yeah. yeah. So, well, the answer has got to be uh, all about conversation and communication, right, Glenda? That none of, we, we aren't all the same. We're different. We, 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 we want to honor and, and harness diversity. And, and, and the challenge is to over communicate. You know what? One of the criticisms that, that's, uh, you know, that comes from, from leaders in change, like John Cotter, uh, who, who's written the book Leading Change, says, you know, the problem with making change happen, with moving in a direction that people are prepared to go along in, is that leaders under communicate. We under communicate purpose, we under communicate vision. And, and, and so we've got to, what I would, there's only one answer and that's you've got to keep having the conversation to find common ground, to explore options, to understand where there are points in common. Uh, so it's all about communicating, communicating and having those strategic conversations. I don't know if there's any other way in the world. Good, good, encouraging. Okay, I'm opening. So Silvana says, I need to drop off, but this has been really helpful, especially as I spend the next three weeks focusing on a specific strategic priority at work. I liked your point on strategy being about making change and persuading others. Great. So if you're still here, Silvana, thanks for that. Um, I'm opening the floor again. Thank you very much, by the way, for diverting me from that uh, that sad story I was going to tell you about. I screwed up. Appreciate that. Um, I mean, you spoke a lot about your communicating your vision and your passion. How about listening? How how does that fit in to, to the team that you're working with? And how do you? Because um, it is more. I think Helen mentioned, you know, or someone about that. It's an or you're trying to. It's still passion in an organization. Um, and so how do you listen to, to people to get to build their passion? Absolutely, yeah. And, 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 and I think, Debbie, just to amplify that point about listening is to listen in an informed way to understand why someone I am trying to communicate with doesn't get it. It's not necessarily because they're stupid. It may well be because they learn differently to the way I do. So... I think that we, we want to draw on expertise from many spheres. You know, I think about, you know, Cole's adult learning styles. What kind of a learner are you? Are you a more concrete experience type learner or a more abstract learner? How do you process what you've discovered? Do you prefer to reflect or do you prefer to act? We, we're all different. And I think that, that part of an effective strategic conversation is to understand how we're different and to harness those differences, right? And part of that is listening, but listening intelligently, listening with information, listening through different lenses. And I, I would say that one of the things I've discovered from strategy is that the strategy models and tools provide us with filters to help um, make sense of the noise. You know, so you've got, we've got so much coming at us in this complex world. How do we filter and make meaning from all the inputs? And I think strategy helps us do that. The strategy models and tools help us do that. But it's not only strategy, it's psychology, it's, um, it's many fields, you know, and, and really I, I hope that, that um, I think, and I was just thinking, Tanya, about your question about children, you know, in a complex world, that they are curious about different ways to make sense of the world. And perhaps that's, a, that, you know, that's that may, underlying the most important word of all, to have uh, curiosity, you know, our passion, our passion is fueled not by what we want to say, but what we want to listen to, right? Um, what we want to hear. Can I ask a question, please? No, sorry, hang on, Tanya. You've, uh, I'll, I'll come back to you. I think okay. Leo Shub, I think Leo Shub had his hand up. Did you, Leo? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Leo and Esme, uh, or then Esme. Look, I just want to say uh, another thing is people. Yeah, firstly. People, when I say people, is 
I'm in the clothing as an industry. And if you don't adapt and listen to your customer yeah. and communicate with them and see change is happening and a move with technology, because you're not communicating with them as you did before, you having to deal with them on a different level. And if you're not up in your game and in, in improving your skill set and giving them, communicating with them in a better sort of way, in a new way, you're going to be stagnate. So I think it's about communicating with people and seeing what their needs are and having a passion for what you're doing and, um, and adapting to the times. So that's sort of applying in my business at the moment and finding a new way of doing things. Uh, Leo, can I respond briefly to that? I think it's such an important point. You know, I, mean, I said earlier, we, we need to be good rule takers, listen to the changes out there. And part of that is listening carefully to our customers and understanding what they would hope for in a changing world and how they would like to be served in a changing world. And so I think that part of strategy, you know, if you're in the world of being relevant, it, it is about... Um, uh, being, being, uh, focusing on being customer centric or understanding the customer's experience. And part of that listening to the customer is also about listening to the people who work in our organizations. You know, to the extent that we are able to value our people, have a culture within the organization where people are valued, that will allow us to make an organization where customers feel valued too. So we almost say, you know, you want to, if you really want to be focused on your customers, focus on your people in a way that allows them to focus on the customers and you will have a successful organization. Okay. Esme, you had a question or comment? Oh, hi, Grant. Hi, Esme. Uh, I just would like your comments on lateral thinking, number one, and number two, with the changing world. What sort of teaching methods you're using now? We're so much more involved with skill, creativity, imagination, and navigating your way with that rather than all those degrees. Hmm. That's such a brilliant question, Esme, because what you're doing is you're inviting the other part of strategy. You know, the other part of strategy is, is all about lateral thinking, about being a rule maker about innovating. And you can think of in South Africa of the most incredible organizations that have succeeded because they've surprised and delighted customers and uh, they've disrupted uh, the status quo. And, and you know, part, part of this Tafoa G, uh, what's going on today out there in here, how well aligned, part of that is about coming up with options that close gaps that are different to what anyone ever thought of. And, and, and you know, when we look at options in, in and, and I talk about this in the book, we, the, the, a whole lot of option, op, creating options is about lateral thinking. It, it's, it's about um, applying scenarios where we use that creative, innovative mindset and we imagine a future based on the inputs we've got that doesn't exist today. And we stand in our organization and day by day, we make that future become a reality. And, and, and you can think about discovery, of course, in South Africa. Uh, and there are a whole lot of organizations, whether it be Apple or Airbnb or Uber, who did just that. They imagined a future a world that didn't exist and they stepped every day managing or strategizing in their organizations to make that desired dream, that lateral thinking dream, a reality. That, that's got to be part of our strategic conversation. In a world where nothing changes, where everything's the same, you don't need imagination. You just need a regression analysis of what happened last year in order to project or predict what's going to happen next year. So well done, Esme. I think it's a really important point. Okay, I think we can take the last question. Uh, it was Tanya. Eric, who did you say it was? Tanya, Tanya. Okay, I, I Tanya, just want to, last it's question. not a question. No, no, Helen, this is not, 
a question. This is just a comment. Uh, uh, Grant's comment about curiosity, I think, is very, very important. And it's also about encouraging the whole learning experience um, uh, and a willingness on the part of not only children, but actually to learn and to, in fact, it's almost like crossing a, 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 a wide river. Um, um, you've got to get across that. That's not my dog, I assure you. Um, uh, and it's all, it is, it, it, it's like the, the old uh, thing of the lion, the goat and the cabbage having to get across the river and how you do that. Well, you know, Tanya, they, they, they used to say, Curiosity killed the cat. But now we say in strategy, curiosity skilled the cat. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, Grant, um, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say some last words and then we'll close. All right. Well, I suppose I'm not sure about last words because I, I want to keep on speaking, Glenda. Um, I, this is not my last <laughs> words, right? Um, I, I, I really, I have to say, I mean, for me, it was, it, it felt meaningful and important to try to put some of these perspectives and concepts together to do just that, to, to fuel the passion of others, to empower them with frameworks and tools and to help them think about purpose for a better world. And, and I, so I really do hope the book is accessible rather than theoretical. But actually, you know, I'm going to be using this book when I teach MBA student strategy, when I work with executives. And I think the book is designed to work at a number of levels. Ultimately, we don't want to get lost in theory. We want to ask ourselves, how can we apply ourselves in clever and innovative and relevant ways to make a difference in our lives and, and in the world? Oh, Thanks, Glenda, you, you so, said I should plug the book, yes. right? So any good bookstore, yes. guys. And uh, you can get it at an e any well. good bookstore. There you go. Mm. Great cover. Any good bookstore. I think Fun Skyke has a bookstore in, in Strand Street, don't they? They used Not to. Not in don't stock. Know if it's no copies in stock. <laughs> You need that uh, is sold out of food, Tanya. My goodness, absolutely. Yes, congratulations. I've just checked. You, so, if you order it from any bookstore exclusive, 15 days, you will get it quickly because <laughs> uh, is a local publisher. And uh, I have tested yeah. this, so it will arrive quicker than 15 days. <laughs> I'll get the so, email. thanks, Tanya. We've got. Oh, I'm talking about my video. Um, Tanya, we've got a retired librarian who's quickly found out the stocks. That's, that's the skill in action. <laughs> um, so everybody, I think you'll all agree and you'll join me in thanking Grant so much for a vision, a passion and a pragmatism and something that applies across so many spheres of our lives. And I'm pretty sure, Grant, you're going to be getting a lot of phone calls and follow-ups um, of people who want you to come and engage. And I hope we, we will have sparked some meaningful connections in that regard as well. Um, I will copy the chat and I will send it to you. And um, uh, our next session is going to be at the end of March and we have um, Leon Levy, who will be coming and talking about his memoir. Um, Sue, is it Leon or Norman? i confused. It's both of them are meant to be coming. Both they're, of a them. Twin, they're a twin, okay. and it's Norman and Leon Levy. Norman is the one that has written a memoir, but they are a twin, and uh, some people will, I mean, many of you will know who they are, yeah. and it's be an interesting conversation but Grant thank you for this brilliant talk um, it, it opens up questions leaves me with many questions and which is as to our own purpose our own passion and uh, I look forward to reading it thanks so much Sue thanks all I really appreciate your really excellent questions 
it was such fun uh, uh, being uh, uh, asked those questions. So I really appreciate this time. Thanks. Well, thank you, everyone. And, and I must say, Grant, I, I'll be very happy if I was if I was giving such a legacy to my children. So well done on that one. I appreciate that. Eric. Thank you so much. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yes.